joining us today at the second annual event that is the only one of its kind in the world, a disability themed Comic Con, to which we have been referring affectionately as our and your Quinn Con. Woohoo! Godzilla is right here. Hello, Godzilla, otherwise, Mr. Ethan Lewis. It's Lydia Fecto and Rachel Zerul Ruggieri. So, take away the suit, and what are you gripping the Comic Con? Was the brainchild of Rachel Zerul Jerry, a.k.a. Batman Woman. In the Avengers film, Captain America asks, take away the suit, and what are you? What does disability mean? How is it defined? By whom? Under what circumstances? These are questions that Rachel and I think very worth asking. trustee sidekick Diane Weiner, director of the SU Disability Cultural Center, and a research associate professor in the School of Education's program in Cultural Foundations of Education, but they didn't give me this cape, someone else did. You can feel free to call me Robin. I have been known to answer to Clarion and Wolverine. Hey you, Weiner, also will suffice. Rachel, who for nearly 29 years has been the information coordinator for the Center on Human Policy, is also an undergraduate majoring in child and family studies and minoring in disability studies at SU. She's an even bigger nerd than I am, if that's possible. <laughs> Thanks for laughing at my jokes. Rachel first began talking with me about the idea for a CRIPCON shortly after we met in October of 2011, although it feels like 10 years ago. And it was mere moments after I arrived at Syracuse University. We decided to pursue this idea in earnest once the Disability Cultural Center had been firmly established on the SU campus. The first CRIPCON happened in April of 2013. Many of you were there. And the evening that it ended, the same evening, we began planning for this year's symposium. So we've been planning the symposium for 12 months. And we have also already begun planning for 2015 since this event will indeed be annual. Thanks to the fellow planning committee members, as mentioned, Mr. Ethan Lewis, otherwise known as Godzilla, who was seated to my left in a green ensemble. Um, Lydia Fecto immediately to Ethan's right, and Rachel immediately to my left. Can I please have a round of applause for these wonderful people? It is very important to emphasize that this event is meant for everyone and thus has everyone in mind, including very young children of all backgrounds with and without disabilities. A very special thank you is extended to Lucas, whom I refer to as our Littlest Access Avenger. The Access Avengers are a team of superheroes with disabilities. Um, they were designed by Jill Stromberg, and you'll see images of them throughout the Panashi Lounge, and uh, there's a poster of the Access Avengers um, in your swag bag. So a very special thank you is extended to Lucas, whom I refer to as our Littlest Access Avenger. You can learn more about Lucas near the information and registration table. Lucas is the cousin of our friend and colleague, Maria Gill, Education Coordinator for the Mid-State Early Childhood Direction Center. And Lucas has a wheelchair in the shape of the Batmobile. Okay. Now I want to thank our many co-sponsors and partners, a vast array of individuals who and entities that made this exciting and innovative symposium possible. The list is long, and this is awesome. if you ask me. I will also share a few words about access and inclusion, and so now you may feel like you're at the Crip Oscars. Ready? This will take an hour. I'm so tired. You'll know it's bad at people if you hear any, any playoff music, you know? Let's <laughs> get the large folks. So if I've forgotten to mention someone's name, it is only because the devil, or in our case, the daredevil. This is the details. Yes, I made that joke last year. <laughs> Some of you don't know daredevil. Daredevil is a superhero who happens to be blind. We have tried very hard to keep track of all of the amazing assistance that we have received. The kindness, enthusiasm, and support have been endless and wonderful. Thank you all. 
to it and for yourselves, or you can bang on the door or wink. You can wink knowingly. Multiple ways of expressing appreciation, right? Inclusive clapping. Deep and abiding gratitude is extended to Cindy Colavita, Monique Godois, Steve Taylor, Pam Walker, everyone from the Center on Human Policy, Steve Singer, Gabby Goodsell, Alex Umstead, Wendy Harbour, Dee Kutovich, and Micah Fialka Feldman from the Tayshoff Center and Peer to Peer, Jill Stromberg, creator of the Axis Avengers, Jill Wukihilo, Naif Amutawa, creator of the 99, which is a critically acclaimed comic series that features superheroes with disabilities and also features superheroes who are Muslim and was praised by the Obama administration as a really unique example of representations of superheroes that are anti-racist. So he donated the better part of 250 comics to us last year, and we have some remaining, and they're on the swag table elsewhere. You can take one. Bridget Yule, Scott Casanova, Alex Snow, Casey Murray, a hand for Casey, Casey's right here. And the entire Rockstar team from Student Centers and Programming Services, Doreen Radin, and the exceptional staff at Caption Advantage for providing CART. Communication access, real-time translation happening right now. Those are the monitors on either side of our interpreters, and those are providing real-time translation, and this is being video recorded, and then we will have a caption video that will be post-produced and then available online and open source for the entire world. So thank you, Doreen and her team. Terry Slater, Tracy Belinsky, and the stellar team of ASL interpreters from Empire Interpreting. Yeah. <laughs> Pat Burak, Lynn Dunick, Lillian Slutsker, and everyone at the Slutsker Center, which is named for Lillian herself, who's in her 90s now, and is still a avid supporter of Syracuse University in particular of the Slutsker Center. Chase Catalano and everyone at the LGBT Resource Center, Brent Elder, Catherine Roman, and all of the officers and members of the Beyond Compliance Coordinating Committee, Leah Nussbaum, and all of the officers and members of the Disability Student Union, Victoria, Gover Victoria excuse me, Governale, Dan Van Sant, and all of the officers and members of the Disability Law Society, Bethany Heaton Crawford, George Irwin, Jamal Nelson, and everyone else on the profoundly cool team at the Office of Disability Services. Just really quickly, our Office of Disability Services is truly an activist space. Many universities do not have the ability to make that claim, and I'm very proud to be able to do so. So really a big shout out to the ODS folks. Larry Craglia and his amazing staff of technical services in the Division of Student Affairs. <coughs> Carrie Delahunt from Hot Shots Photo Booth. Nicole Ginsberg, Rick Kulak, and the entire zombification team from Frightmare Farms. <laughs> Mary Lee Hodgins from Lightwork for providing us with access to <laughs> and usage of the Menschel Gallery as a quiet and low stem room during the entire symposium. Kristen Jones Collid, Jan Uriniak, Tammy Hoffman, Riddell Roberts, and Interim Dean and Senior Vice President of Student Affairs, Rebecca Reed Kantrovitz. All of those folks work for the Division of Student Affairs. I saw Sylvia Langford someplace. There's Sylvia Langford. Thanks so much for being here. Sylvia is an Associate Vice President in the Division of Student Affairs. Uh, Casey, uh, Cassie Bravo, who rescued me on the grassy knoll by helping me take a mallet to the brand new funky PR lawn signs, and I implicate her by mispronouncing her name, so now I'm say it correctly, Cassie Bravo. All of the members of the anti-imperialist Hoople Nation, we do have a flag, but we are not nationalists. Catherine Putzaitis and her exceptional staff from Shine Catering, SU photographer Steve Sartori, Roxanne Nizabatowski, and the top-notch team from the video production unit, Mary Beth Shenick and all the great staff from the Shine Copy Center, Helen Krauss and Aileen Kopp from the University Bookstore, the team at 4imprint, the entire Division of Student Affairs, all the Disability Studies faculty, God herself, and everyone who helped to spread the I got that. Um, <laughs> Everyone who helped to spread the word hither and yon and to get quote Buzz Lightyear as I did last year to infinity and beyond. Mm -hmm. So applause in any way you feel to express it for all those people. <laughs> for a tough room. I'm gonna have to work with you. Okay. Very
Very special thanks also go to all the symposium presenters, vendors, artists, and participants, volunteers, all the folks who lent us games and gaming systems. Thank you, Ben. And last but certainly not least, all of the student, faculty, staff, alumni, and community representatives on the Disability Cultural Center's advisory board. Thank you to all of the comic universes and multiverses for all of the inspiration. Gratitude is important. Life is short. So enormous gratitude to the Division of Student Affairs Co-Curricular Departmental Initiatives Program for funding the lion's share of the symposium. Thanks to our co-sponsors, the Disability Cultural Center, the Center on Human Policy, the Slutsker Center, the Beyond Compliance Coordinating Committee, the LGBT Resource Center, the Disability Student Union, Disability Studies at Syracuse University, and the Disability Law Society. And thanks to our significant others, kids, family members, friends, partners in crime fighting, and social justice attainment. We're using Skype to make CART possible today and this evening and ask that everyone be mindful of the use of computers and audiovisual equipment to assist our CART providers with the remote real-time translation process. And speaking of technology, I ask you to silence your cell phones in anticipation of Ms. Grossman's performance in a few moments. By participating in a Syracuse University-sponsored event, you have given implicit consent to be photographed and video recorded. However, if you wish not to be photographed or video recorded, please be seated to my immediate right. And I want to spend a moment discussing American Sign Language for people who may not be familiar with working with professional sign language interpreters. You will see there are sign language interpreters on either side of the stage. It is customary in the context of an event like this particularly not to address interpreters or to ask them questions as they are not participating in the event, but are here only in their roles as skilled and expert linguistic interpreters. As mentioned, we are providing communication access, real-time translation, and American Sign Language interpretation, as well as transliteration during all keynotes, plenaries, and major spoken event elements. American Sign Language interpretation will also be provided during all four in-current sessions and occur as a part of every single other facet of the symposium, its activities, and programming. So there will be an interpreter station available um, in the uh, Panashi Lounge if you have need of interpreting or would like to communicate with someone who requires the use of an interpreter. And there are 13 professional sign language interpreters present during the symposium, which I think is pretty groovy. And they are coordinated by the amazing Tracy Blinsky. So again, some Braille signage, a multi-formatted symposium program in standard print, large print, electronic, braille, and set up by room color-coded. The catering selections, multi-height tables, a quiet and low stimulation room, including a multi-user beanbag chair, and a children's quiet play area, complete with 18 minutes. And the interactive color badges in your name tags are among the numerous demonstrations of our commitment to inclusive event planning as these approaches toward access can be used by an array of audience members and event participants. If I were an octopus, this would be easy. I would have seven arms if I were an octopus, though, because I'd be a quick <laughs> Electronic copies of today's materials will be posted with presenter's consent. I'm sorry, I just thought of the word septopus. Septopus. <laughs> That's my new name, Ethan. Septopus. You may have heard of me as Septopus. <laughs> Electronic copies of today's materials will be posted with the presenter's consent via the Beneath the Surface Digital Repository, an open source accessible interface on disability and popular culture, and the only one of its kind in the world, by the way. And Rachel and I launched that with the SU Library last year. Please feel free to direct any questions to Ethan, Lydia, Rachel, or myself. Uh, during breaks or after the event, or you can grab us. Um, depending upon our interpreter's availability and professional preferences, they may be available again after the event, it's concluded to answer any questions that you may have about sign language interpretation in particular. So back to these color badges. So you'll notice that your name tag has color badges. Um, these are red, yellow, and green cards. And these cards are adapted from and inspired by Autreat, which is an international conference coordinated by autistic people, for autistic people, family members, and allies. Wearing a red badge means 
Nobody should try to interact with me. Yellow, this is Vanna. I was going to say, I, I want to let everybody know I am showing the cards. Vanna and Septimus are going on the road. Okay, so yellow, a yellow big, come on, that's great, come have some fun. Okay, a yellow <laughs> that signifies uh, only people I already know should interact with me, not strangers. Wearing a green badge signifies I want to interact, but I'm having trouble initiating, so please initiate interaction with me. These interactive badges are also labeled with words in order to consider individuals with color blindness from whom distinguishing between green and red typically proves difficult, if not impossible, depending upon the type of color blindness. So no, we didn't think of everything, but we thought of a lot. Because there is perhaps no such thing as true universal design, individuals who are sighted are encouraged to be mindful of individuals who are blind, visually impaired, or who have low vision when using badges and other items. Each of your name tags also includes a door prize drawing ticket, which is blue. Door prizes have been donated by various mysterious people. A door prize, a door prize drawing uh, will occur at the conclusion of the symposium this evening, and the remaining door prizes will be drawn tomorrow evening. One of the door prizes is something that might best be autographed by Ms. Grossman. I shall not say anything further so as to avoid Spoilers. Now the people who like spoilers can catch me outside. Complimentary refreshments will be served this morning, this evening, and tomorrow morning. We have included gluten-free, kosher, and vegetarian food choices and provided ingredient labeling to assist you. Vendors, artists, a costume play or cosplay area, as well uh, as a gaming room, as mentioned also a quiet and stimulation room, will be available during breaks, mealtimes, and throughout the day. The photo booth, which is free and open to the public, as is the entire conference. The photo booth today will be open from 4 to 6 and from 2.30 to 4.30 tomorrow. You may visit the photo booth as many times as you wish. And if you have questions about vending, please see Godzilla. Today's events end at 8 o'clock, and the symposium itself concludes tomorrow at 5. We ask that you assist us by completing evaluations, which will be made available electronically on our website. Please enjoy these two days and evenings, everyone. Please let us know what you liked, what you thought we could have done better, and that we will be ready for next year. And now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our first keynote, Ms. Naomi Grossman. So I'm going to ask the fellow planning committee members to exit the stage, and I'm going to come down here. So it's now my distinct pleasure to introduce our first keynote, Ms. Naomi Grossman. Please note that Naomi's performance this morning is intended for mature audiences only. An alternative activity, a screening of the PBS video Superheroes, A Never Ending Battle, will take place in our gaming room concurrent with this performance, and that's Shine 302, which is right out here. So if you are not interested in watching a performance intended for mature audiences, or if there are young children in the room, I suggest that they depart now. Ms. Grossman will be available to sign autographs today from 1 to 4 p.m. with a break from 2 to 2.15, and tomorrow between 10.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m., as well as between 1.30 and 2.30. Her signing station is right by the fireplace in the center of the Panache Lounge. Naomi Grossman's critically acclaimed comedy is a carnal romp, replete with hilarious caps and peppered with surprising poignancy. She takes her audience on the rough but thrilling roller coaster ride that is the search for one's soulmate, only to discover that maybe love is easier to find than it may seem. Set on a carnival midway, Grossman chronicles her own dizzying dating history by depicting a freak show full of suitors, a touchy-feely yoga teacher, a furry in a chicken suit, a touring Argentine soccer team, a dangerous hot-headed hunk, and the list goes on. 
how hysterical those sobering perils and pitfalls of playing the dating game ultimately lead her to rethink her strategy and the quest to find the one. Following her performance, Naomi will sit down for a question and answer session with us as well as address what it's like to be a non-disabled person playing a person with a disability on television, among other topics. Naomi is well known for her portrayal of Pepper on American Horror Story Asylum. Further details about Naomi are available in our symposium program, as well as on her website, naomigrossman.net. Please join me in giving a big orange welcome to Naomi Grossman.